see if we can be joining us here just a moment, if you bear with me here. We're gonna get connected here. For those of you who may be uh, aware, we are joining us here today. A little bit of something different outside on my little balcony, home before we get the day started. Here in beautiful Gatineau, Quebec, the sun is shining. We have a beautiful blue uh, sky. Today's topic I'm gonna to be talking about are something that I've touched on in the past. It's the five personalities that nearly every nonprofit board director, uh, board of directors faces. Now I've a variety of different ways that you can cut it. I've, I've named them in a different path uh, before on a prior uh, blog article, the Society of Nonprofit Board Directors. But today, for, for impact's sake, I'm gonna talk about what I call the five Fs. The five Fs of nonprofit board service. So if you're interested in knowing a little bit more about the nonprofit uh, world and what makes for getting the right type of people on your board of directors. Stay tuned here. If you're joining us for the first time and you're not sure a little bit of who I am, my name is Mark Uzan. I am the founder of the Society of Nonprofit Board Directors and of uh, our Executive Director Association Management Services. I'm also the father of a wonderful little a uh, five-year-old named Simon, uh, husband to a great uh, wonderful lady named Carolina, and as well, the two-time executive director of national uh, associ uh, association president of two not national not-for-profits uh, organizations in the association sphere. So, uh, for again, for today's purpose, we're going to be talking about what I call the five Fs, the five Fs of uh, different types of personalities. So if you're interested in this, for the sake of uh, face Facebook's algorithms and other uh, social media platforms, heart this, like this, share this, please get this word out because you're helping very much and be greatly appreciated getting the word out of the Society of Nonprofit Board Directors. Again, a association specifically for people who serve on the boards of nonprofits and associations. We can talk about that a little bit more later. So if you want a purpose of joining us, one of the best ways for housekeeping purposes, uh, we're broadcasting today from Facebook on the Society of Nonprofit Board Directors uh, live stream, or uh, broadcasting on my own personal page on Facebook, on Periscope, and on YouTube. And later we'll try to get something out on to uh, LinkedIn as well. So without further ado, I'm going to talk about the five board personalities. Now the first board personality is what we call uh, the, the, the first F, if you will, is the friend. Now who is the friend? The friend is if it is somebody usually from the perspective of say of the staff person, but maybe somebody else as well on the board. It's a person that's generally on your side. It's been, uh, they're a collaborator, they're a go-getter, they've got a, a, a desire to want to, uh, to, to partake in things. They're a leader, generally speaking. And they're generally the type of person that you really want in the role of chair of the board of directors. They have often sometimes an ability, to, an, inter an interesting ability to be able to influence others on the board to a higher standard. These folks are the ideals. You want them on the board. You want to cherish them. You want to value and, much, uh, and, and recognize them as much as possible. That's the ideal situation. There are four other types of personalities, board personalities, five, four other Fs, if you will. On the flip side of that, you have what you call the fiend. You hope that, uh, very often that these don't come about very often. Uh, but sometimes they can come about. These are rare occasions, but in my experience, they're the type of individual that they're, uh, they, they, raise, they raise objections for the sake of raising objections. They want to challenge the paradigms because that, that makes them perhaps, from the perspective, they think that that's their job, is to always to raise the objections to certain one thing or another. Now, this can be good, but it can also be, get to, if, if not left unchecked, it can also lead to a situation where it leaves 
log jams in discussions where people don't feel that they have an ability or comfortable to be able to speak up because of the fear that they might be challenged every little bit of a point that they have uh, express a viewpoint of some sort or another. See, I, I think you can see a little bit from what I'm talking about how the fiend can also become a, well, a relatively downer, frankly, for many people who want to be able to participate on things. If you're facing with somebody like this, there's a few things. Else. And after a lot of years of own personal experience of having, having dealt with some of the, the fiends on this, I think that the one of the ways that you have to first off consider is how did they become that way? Is that that's just naturally their, their, the way they operate? Sometimes maybe they be weak. Or perhaps at some point or another, they felt like they weren't given that opportunity to be able to participate at an early point in time. That's a possibility. All of this leads to the fact that it's at some point in time, you're going to need the strength of a good board chair who's got that personal chutzpah, if you will, be able to take that person aside and say, look, with diplomacy and with professionalism, this is, there's some, what's going on? What's really some of the issues of the challenges here? So that's the first thing. You need to be able to address these things because frankly, these kinds of individuals, as, as I've alluded to before, they can be infectious. They can have a really negative impact. And sometimes I've seen boards who would be highly, otherwise be highly effective. And all it takes is one person, one bad apple to have the cart go off the, off the road. That's the number two. The third type of board personality you most often come across it's what I call the follower, the third F, the follower. So we've got so far the friend, the fiend, and the follower. The follower is the type of person who just goes along with the discussions. They may not speak up very much. They, they're just sort of there and smile. They show up. Maybe they show up. Who knows? And they don't say anything the whole time. Now, surprisingly, these individuals can often have a lot of great ideas, but for whatever reason, lack of comfort, shyness, whatever that may be, they may not necessarily feel comfortable with speaking up. It's very much incumbent upon the board chair, particularly the board chair, not the staff, the board chair is there to take leadership and encourage their participation. Now, what are some of the reasons that somebody would join onto a board only to shut up and not, not do much? Well, they have a desire. There's a passion to do that there. But often I would, I would chalk it up to a lack of understanding of how they're supposed to be involved. This is where board on training, uh, onboarding, if you will, board onboarding is so necessary. It's very important from that, that, that state of mind that your board sets out policies and procedures from the beginning to be able to educate board directors on what their role is, what's expected of them, and to give them a little bit of that courage to speak up and ask questions. You need to create a space on your board where everything, as long as it's asked respectfully, is safe okay that's that's important otherwise if somebody's on the board and they're not speaking up and not participating what's the point what's the point of having them there the fourth type of board personality is what i call the foreigner that's the fourth half so so far we've got the free the, the the friend the fiend the follower and now the foreigner the foreigner can come in different two ways of things. The first is that they come often sometimes from the outside. They've got a desire, they've got in their heart, they want to be able to contribute and make a difference somehow with the organization. But they're not really sure exactly how they fit in. Or, and as a result of things, maybe they come up with stuff that's just completely off and left, left, left field here. Sometimes... Uh, they even become the foreigner by being effective for a variety of reasons. They like, maybe they just like the board, the, the title of board director and don't show up. They don't show up to frequently enough meetings. That's a whole other issue on itself that we talked about uh, on other occasions 
at the Society of Nonprofit Board Directors, no, namely dealing with the underperforming board director there. But for today, what we'll talk about largely is, is, is this instance here. Somebody who can be one of these other personalities I've mentioned here can be, fall into track of becoming the foreigner just by simply because of the fact that they become estranged from the group. Now, the foreigner can be good and it can be bad. On one hand, it's great that they will often, sometimes if they're, if they're keen and, they're, and they admit to the fact that they, maybe they know, that they admit to that they, they, they admit to what they don't know there, and, but they come more or less to uh, the role from the viewpoint of adding fresh and exterior experience which is great for a board, particularly if you've been on one direction for another, adding a new perspective is so important. But they can also present a risk if the whole of the group is not paying attention that if they come off as, let's say, a, a mixture of one of the other parts of personalities, either the fiend or, 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 uh, or the follower or like this, adding ideas in that might lead the organizational off into a, into a path that doesn't make a lot of sense because the fact of, well, they don't have the same history or organizational experience or memory as others who may be on the board or staff. The fifth type of board personality, the fifth F, is the fool. Now I say this a little bit with ten, tongue in cheek. I don't want to sound demeaning to anyone there, but I think everybody at one point or another can be fall into the trap of becoming the board fool, if you will. The board fool is really often someone who comes into the role and they're not even really certain about what their, what their role is. They are really don't maybe have appreciate a full appreciation of the gravity of the decisions that a board of directors has on, with an organization. And as a result, they might not necessarily appreciate the consequences of their involvement or lack of involvement in a board discussion and decisions. So the best way of handling someone like this is making certain that it's handled right at the beginning of the process, the recruitment process. You've got to make certain that your board sets out standards of performance, sets out policies that are clearly understood, and that all can get on board with and understand as well. So if you're really keen on wanting to know more about board service, how you can get more about this and how you can even deal with the fool, if you will, the Society of Nonprofit Board Directors has a wonderful role called, a uh, wonderful book called Seven Tips for uh, Vetting, Recruiting and Onboarding New Board Directors. You wanna learn more about this role as well and you wanna join in our conversations in the next in there, Make sure to check us out on Zoom. The link is down below in the description and you can jo uh, join in with us on the chat as well. So thanks everyone. And we hope to see you involved in reading us with more of our uh, content here at the Society of Nonprofit Board Directors. Thanks so much.